sinners, sinners, come home, oh, hasten to obey you, Lord. Give me the glory and wait. Heaven knows that I'm in the glory and wait. Yes, you know that I'm in the glory and wait. Heaven, heaven, heaven is nearer and the way you grow with clearer I got a long white road. Oh, 
blessing business. Let's give God a hand clap of praise today. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. He's brought us from a mighty long way. If he's done something for you, keep clapping. Say amen when you can. If he's delivered you from something, keep clapping. Say amen when you can. Yeah, if he's bringing you through something right now, keep clapping. Say amen when you can. If you didn't think you was going to see today, keep clapping. Say amen when you can. God is good. God is good. God is good. Stay on your feet. Stay on your feet. Stay on your feet. Well, I would bring the song leader back up, but it's, it's, it's done got late, and, and, and I know y'all need a sermon. Say amen when you can. I don't plan to preach long today, but just long enough. Say amen when you can. Shall you, will you pray with me? 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 Lord, show us the way. Lord, show us the way. Show us the way. Show us the way. Show us, Lord. Lord, we've come to you today to black out everything but just to praise well, your name. We came to black out all the problems, Amen. all the challenges. Yeah, I know it's Christmas, and I know we still got gifts to go home and open and meals to go cook. But, Lord, we came to give you the glory. For you are the reason for every season. Lord, you have not brought us this far to leave us. So we, 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 we should celebrate you every day. I believe the world got it wrong. They just want to celebrate you on December 25th. But I know you should be celebrated every day. I believe the world's got it wrong. They've limited you to this just little time frame. Well, well. And I'm grateful for that, Lord, but I believe your name needs to be praised Amen. every day. Well, well. So, Lord, we give you the glory. Yes. Now, Lord, we just give you the praise and we give you the honor. Lord, now take my four pages of notes. If you need me to preach, I'll preach. If you need me to teach, I'll teach. But at the end of the day, Lord, we pray that there'll be a healing power, something transformative, and maybe somebody will hear the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection. And they will change. And Lord, next Sunday, we come back, it'll be a new year. It'll be a new year next Sunday, Lord. It will be a new year. We say thank you, we say thank you, and we praise you that we are starting now to become better people. It is in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Everybody who agreed said amen, 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 amen. amen. Be seated, be seated. God is good, y'all. 
Oh, he's been good. And he's brought some of us from a mighty long way. I know next week is New Year's. But he's brought us from a mighty long way. He's so good because I'm so glad you sang that song. That even today, I, I need him to show me the way. Yeah, if he's on, some of us, we're trying to make it on our own, but we really need to check all that at the door and say, Lord, show me the way. Some of us are struggling through the holidays based on what we preached last week about depression, and I'm, I'm here to tell somebody that the Lord is showing you the way. Some of you are struggling like me with grief because you lost some people so dear to you this year or last year or the year before or within a certain time frame. But the Lord is not only showing you the way, he's bringing you through. Oh, I just need about 12 to 15 minutes of your time this morning. If y'all will join me in Matthew chapter 2. If you'll join me in Matthew chapter 2. If you'll join me as we talk about Jesus this morning. Is it all right? Yes. Can we have a church service where we talk about Jesus this morning? Can I talk about his healing power this morning? How I, can I talk about how he, he's blessing us this morning? As I look at this passage, this passage, as I began to pray and prepare, as I began to say, what would you say on Christmas? What would you say uh, uh, on this day where we glorify God? What would we say as they celebrate his birth? I'm glad he, I'm glad he was born. My friends, I'm glad he was born because if he wasn't born, he couldn't have died. Say amen when you can. You see what I'm saying? So let's not stand up here and be hypocritical. Oh, we don't celebrate this and we don't celebrate that. Because I'm here to tell you, if you meet me at the back door and, and give me a gift, I'm going to take it. Say amen when you can. If you got anything for me, you can cash out my wife. Say amen when you can. Oh, come on, y'all. Stop playing. Other preachers can say that I've said, and y'all looking like, oh, Lord, now let me get back to the text. But come here. 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 I looked at this text. Matthew chapter 2, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod king, the king, behold wise men, this was your text brother Mark, from the east came to Jerusalem saying where is he who has been born king of the Jews for we have seen his star oh I need to stop right there because there's somebody from the old school that remember the song you ain't gotta be a star but I see you back there. Somebody old know what I'm talking about. You ain't got to be a star. Somebody old know what I'm talking about. To be, Donnie, that's before your time. Don, Donnie's like, I don't know nothing about that right there. But somebody old, even, 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 even Clayton White had to smile right there. Because he understood that song. You ain't got to be a star. Bill Davis is sitting there like, Sue, you remember that? Lord Jesus, you ain't got to be a star. <laughs> to be somebody know what I'm talking about but I'm so glad <laughs> y'all gonna make me preach right here that Jesus is my bright and my morning star what does that mean contextually it means that the, he's the bright and the morning star how can you have a bright star in the daytime you got a bright star in the daytime because Jesus is always shining oh let me be alone come here come here come here come here look what he said look what he says look what he says for we have seen his star in the east and we've come to worship him yes. when heard the king heard this he was troubled Mark Jesse he began to have Problem. He gathered all the scribes and the Pharisees. If I'm going to tag this, and I'm going to preach for about 10, 12 minutes, and I'm going to take my seat. When heaven came to earth. Oh, some of y'all done missed y'all shot. It's deep. It's deep. You got to understand that heaven, and not only heaven, but holy, came down to this earth. Heaven 
when it comes to earth. You see, Jesus was there in the beginning, in the beginning, Colossians 1. He is the firstborn over all creations. Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, it says, in the beginning, let us, Elohim, plural. Jesus was at creation. Well, you were saying, how can he come to earth? How can he be a son of God? And how can he be at creation? Why? Because he is God, say amen when you can. See, some of you don't respect Jesus is God. You, you, you see, see, come here, come here, come here, come here. This morning, it's Christmas Day, and we're here to talk about and learn more about the real reason for the season. We're here today because to talk about Christ, the Christ of the Christmas. We're here to make note of his accomplishments, his divine authority, his divine goodness, and his sacrificial life where he laid down his life for my sins. The first thing in this text that jumped out to me in chapter 1 and 21, first let's look at his power. You need to know that you got a savior who got power. Say amen when you can. Amen. Chapter 1 and 21. Go to chapter 1 and 21. Chapter 1 and 21. Matthew chapter 1 and 21. And he will bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus and he will save his people from sin. The word save in Greek is the Greek word sozo. It'll preach in a minute. I'm just teaching now. It's Greek word sozo. Look it up when you get home. 4892. The word sozo means save. The word sozo means that he's going to deliver me from danger. It means that I needed saving because I could not save myself. It also means to rescue. I said it means to rescue. There's got to be somebody in here. You need to know that you ain't rescued yourself. That the Lord has rescued you from your mess. That the Lord is still rescuing you from your mess. But it's been to get deep. The Lord is rescuing you from you. Oh, come here, somebody. Come here, somebody. The word save. Check the text out again. Matthew 1, 21. In he... And he, and, and watch this, and she, and she, oh, I'm sorry, and, and she will bring forth a son, talking about Mary, this virgin birth. Yes. And you shall call his name Jesus, and he will save, what's he going to save his people from? From sin. I'm so glad that he, once I heard the gospel, believed the gospel, repented of my sin, confessed to Jesus' the most important name on mortal tongue, baptized for a midst of sin, he began the process of saving me. Mm, come here, come here. You see, not only not only he going to save me, next, the same word, to save. Tell your neighbor, rescue Oh, tell you, touch him, touch him, wake him up, shake him, rock him, touch him, shake him, rock him, say, he rescued me. Oh, touch him, shake him, rock him again, and tell him, he rescued me. Okay, shake him, rock him again, and tell him this, he rescued my crazy self. Oh, come on, somebody, anybody in here that been crazy and the Lord done rescued? You, somebody ought to get. I know y'all don't want no preaching today. I know y'all want to get home and get to your greens, and I know you want to get home and get to your collars, and I know you want to get home and get to the rest of the gifts you ain't open. But he rescued you. Did he rescue anybody in here? Okay, stay with the text. Stay with the text. He saved me. The word save is sozo in the Greek. He rescued from me from myself. I need to be rescued from my bad thinking. I need to be rescued from this world of sin and doubt. The word, the word means also it got deep, Brother George Elder. It got deep, Brother Mark. I mean, I about came out my, I about unglued when I start reading. He not only does he save me, not only does he rescue me, but it meant that he gets me literally to divine safety. Hey, hey, y'all, I know y'all ain't got nothing for the Lord this morning. I know he, y'all done say he got to understand. You just didn't get to safety. You got to divine safety. You, you, you still ain't got it. You still ain't got it. You just didn't get to a good place where you were okay. You got, the Lord is taking you to a good spiritual place because it's divine safety. And when it's divine safety, you can't take it from me. And the reason you can't take it from me is because you didn't give it to me. Okay, come here, come here, come here. 
Come here, come here, come here. Mercy. Divine Savior, when he started his church, Matthew 16, 18, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. He makes a path for me that helps me get to divine safety. John 14 to 6. I am the way, the truth, and the, I am the way, the path, the direction. Amen. I, I, I'm talking about, talking about, talking about when heaven came to earth. That's what they did because man, Adam, and, Adam and Eve messed up in the garden. Yeah. Man had a way to get, had to have a way to get back to God. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Everlasting life is the divine safety. Oh, ain't no, okay, okay. Let me keep moving. His power. His power. Just on this word safe, this word save, sin, this word save and ain't done is divine safety. The word save, Sister Carol, has another connotation. It has the connotation of preserving me. I just wish I had two people who understood right now that you ain't saved yourself, that you was a mess, that you was probably at the party last night and they got to shooting, or you was at the New Year's Eve party in 1971 and they got to shooting, and some kind of way you got down behind a table or you got out and got in your car, but the Lord preserved you. Oh, you ain't got nothing to say right now. Okay. Some of you was in bad relationships. God got you out of that bad relationship. Therefore, he preserves you. Oh, you ain't got no shouts yet. You understand something? You were driving down the road, fell asleep at the wheel, car ran out the road, car messed up and wrecked. You get out, walk out like ain't nothing wrong with you. The Lord preserves you. You were shouting a minute. Don't worry about it. He preserves. He preserves me. He preserves me. I'm so glad that we can use the same old song, Jesus, keep me near the cross. You see, he's kept me both physically. He's kept me both spiritually. Come here. And he's kept me mentally and emotionally. Sometimes the keeping and the preserving ain't always physical. Sometimes some of us in here, God has went to work in our mind because we wasn't thinking straight. He preserves us. <laughs> Okay, there's one more connotation of the word. He heals. All this from one, this one word, verse 21. And she will bring forth Mary, going to bring forth the son, divine conception of the Holy Spirit. Name going to be Jesus, and he will save. I'm so glad that he heals. Mm, this word heals has three or four meanings. He literally, he literally heals my soul's diseases. It'll preach in a minute. Everybody got some, everybody got some, everybody got some stuff on their soul, some leprosy in their heart. Everybody got some stuff that the Lord, I'm just talking about when heaven came down to earth. That's what Jesus did. He came to save you. He came to preserve you. He came to heal you. Huh? Okay, 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 okay. Now let me, let me get deep. Donnie, come here. This messed me up. Davis, I'm sitting there looking like I'm reading. Then I got to chapter 2. After, now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Can I teach here? <laughs> oh, uh, Clayton, I'm glad he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. And I'm glad it wasn't Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Nor was it Bethlehem of Galilee. I'll teach in a minute. There was another Bethlehem. It wasn't the Bethlehem of Galilee. See, it's like I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad when the, up, on the, up on this right now, Peter, a uh, 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 Caesarea on the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea, Caesarea ain't the only Caesarea. There's a Caesarea by the sea. Me and my wife went to. There's Caesarea Philippi. There's Bethlehem of Judea. And there's Bethlehem of Galilee. I'm so glad that he was born in Bethlehem of Judea to fulfill the prophecy. As it says, for unto us, a child is born. Ain't that around about Isaiah 9, 6? Is that Isaiah 9, 6 says, unto us, a child is born. Huh? Unto us, unto us. 
Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Here's the one that I love right Everlasting Father. He's going to always be my King of Kings. Okay, okay. Watch this. Let me get ready to close. His power. His power. Why did Herod get so upset? Go back to the text, verse 3. When Herod heard this, he was troubled. And all of Jerusalem was with him, and the priest and the scribes, and why, 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 why little baby? Go get a grown king. All messed up in the head. I'm going to preach in a minute. Why in the world are you Herod the king? You ain't even a Jew, you an Edomite. Come here. You've been put in place by the Roman government. Come here. You sent the Magi, the three wise men, but the text say Magi. They can't bring in Frank Simpson Merck to honor a king. You, you a grown man, got armies at your command, and you worry about a little bitty child. Well, let me tell you something. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Here wanted to kill him. Two, one through three. Two, one through three. When Herod the king heard that he was born, he was troubled and gathered his chief scribes and Pharisees. What we gonna do? All this over, baby. No, sir, it ain't just any baby. This was the child, watch this, who was born king. Oh, you done missed your shout. Let me come down here as I get ready to call this thing. It was a child who was born king, y'all. You, you still ain't got it yet. Come here. It was a child. Look at 2 and 1, 2 chapter 1, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. In the days of Herod the king, 2 and 2, saying, where is he who was born king? What's your point, preacher? David had to be, I'm closing, anointed king. Solomon had to be anointed king. Saul had to be anointed king. Rehoboam had to be anointed king. Jeroboam had to be anointed king. Asa had to be anointed king. But God, but Jesus. Jesus didn't have to be made king. Let me close. He was born king. Woo, y'all, I'm leaving alone right there. You can't handle no more. You gonna come out your seat in a minute. That nobody had to make him king. He was king from the beginning. So therefore, that's why Herod all messed up in the head. Herod so messed up in the head. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. Herod so messed up in the head. Herod said, man, you magi, y'all go check him out. They following the star. They fall and start, go check him out. Come back and tell me. He didn't lie, so I can go and worship him. You a grown king over this province. You ain't got to bow down and worship nobody but the one who's over you. So he said, I'm going to come and worship little boy. Look what he did. Look what he did. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. Go. Verse 9. Verse 10, chapter 2. Herod says, I'm going to kill every young boy who is under the age of two. Herod 2 and 16. Then Herod, when they saw that he was deceived by the wise men, he was exceedingly angry, sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he... So y'all looking at me like y'all didn't know that. Herod said, he going to rule because I heard about it. He going to reign, I heard about it. I got to kill him before he even get going. And if I kill him 
as a baby. I ain't never got to worry about anything that he going to do. And to make sure that I get it because he is born the king. He is Christ my thing. I got to get him early. And not only, I don't want to miss him. A matter of fact, he reminds me of what I heard about Moses. They was try, Pharaoh was trying to kill everybody, every young child in the land, because the folks that lived in the land. Matter of fact, Moses is a type of Christ, a deliverer. But Herod said, I got to kill you. My friends, when you know there's a calling on your life, when you know there's something in you that God is trying to do, there's an enemy that's trying to kill you before you get started, when you know there's purpose on your life, when God's got a greater calling on your life, when God has got something great for you, Satan and the enemy is trying to wipe you out, not when you get older, but when you down here and all the way up your whole life. Ain't nobody going to say nothing in a minute. I'm close. His power. Don't take him out. Go back. He said he's king. 2-1. I, I can't pronounce this Greek word. Y'all got to be a king. The Greek word is basileos. I don't pronounce it right. I'm sorry. Greek word number 935. But it means he's a sovereign ruler. I'm glad I serve a Jesus that's a sovereign ruler, that he's all powerful. This messed me up because here's what it said. He has unqualified jurisdiction. Come here, somebody. I'm done. I ain't got too much else to say. Jesus has unqualified jurisdiction. Mean he got total free reign over everything. Here's the question. Have you allowed him to have total free reign over your life? Here he is. You got to know who you serve. You got to know who you're working with. I need to know who I'm walking alongside. I'm walking with a king. Say amen when you can. I'm walking with a king. I'm walking with the king of glory. I've been baptized into his death. Romans 6. I've been baptized into the king of glory. He's so tough they tried to take him out when, when he was two. And then, and then, and then, daddy got smart. A dream came to him. Y'all been in the text. And said, dream came to Joseph. You got to get up out of here. So they go to Egypt. He go to Egypt. I told you, he, Moses was a type of, he goes to Egypt. He goes to Egypt. Then, after Herod dies, technically, 4 B.C. No, 4, 4, yeah, 4 B.C., no, no, you're year four, the year four. Herod dies in the year four. In Jesus' name, and they come back. Let me get ready to take my seat. Can I talk about his presence? Can I talk about his presence just for a moment? Look at, look at, look, 123. And look here, behold, the virgin shall be with child, bear a son, and call his name Emmanuel. I, I know it, don't, it, ain't, it ain't no shouting word. Emmanuel. I'm talking about when heaven came to earth. Emmanuel. Means God with the Herbert. It literally means God is with us. Literally speaking on a day-to-day -day basis, you need to know that you got the Lord with you. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. And if you got the Holy Spirit, you got Jesus. If you got Jesus, you got God. It is Emmanuel, God with us. You need to know what the real reason for every season, the real reason for your existence, the real reason why you got up this morning is because God is with you. Look, 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 look. I'm never alone. Because I got God with me. I'll never be by myself because I got God with me. I'll never be lost because he's my compass. God is with me. It says Emmanuel. You understand? You, it's Emmanuel. He's God with us. Even in my problems, he's with me. Even in my sorrow, he's with me. He said, I'm going to leave you a comforter. I'm going to send a comforter. Okay, let me get ready to close. Let me get ready to close. Let me give you the clothes. I told you he was a king. I told you he'll save. I told you that he's Emmanuel. If 
finally, 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 finally. Look at verse 2 and 6, 2 and 6. But, but he says, but, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are you not the least of the rulers of Judah? For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people. Who will shepherd. I'm so glad that he's my shepherd. I, I, I'm so glad that when I don't know which way to go, because he's a shepherd, because sheep, me and being a sheep, sheep ain't always as smart. Sheep, sheep will walk off a cliff trying to get to the better food. Sheep will get in fast-paced water, but Jesus is my shepherd because his job is to protect me. His job is not only to protect me, but his job is to lead me. See, a lot of us don't want to let the shepherd lead. You trying to lead you you don't want the Lord to lead you. You pray to the Lord after you have made your decision. I'm talking about when heaven came to earth. Come on, he opened up this direct line of communication with him. Yes. He leads me. But finally, he takes total care of my well-being. You need to know why you follow him. You see, some of us, we still, as we go through things, we still half in and half out. Jesus is calling you. He's calling you to learn more about him. He's calling you to know more about him. He's calling you to believe the gospel story. Gospel is a death, burial, and resurrection. That's how he came down to this sinful earth. He tried to get him when he was only two. But they thought they had him when he was 33. <laughs> they tried to get him when he was two and under. When he was in 2T, when he was a toddler, they tried to get him. And then they thought they had him when he was 30. Get him preaching in a minute. They thought they had him when he was 33 years old. So they thought they had him. They thought they had it. I told you he was a savior, the one that came to rescue you. I told you he was your savior, the one that, that, that he, and he's been rescuing ever since. They thought they had it. But he said, no, nah, y'all ain't, y'all don't take my life. He said, I laid my life down. But he laid his life down for sinners like you and me. So that we could have a right to the tree of life. I'm so glad that he went to the, that he went to the cross of Calvary. I'm so glad that he walked down the Via De La Rosa, the way of the cross. I'm so glad that he died on the cross. Because if he hadn't died on the cross, we would not have a chance to understand forgiveness, salvation. They thought they had him in the grave. Day one, we got it. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got it. Ooh, we got it. Matter of fact, just to make sure we need some guards to stand there, Jesse. We need some guards to stand by the tomb. Right? We need some guards to stand there by the tomb. You going to guard a dead man too? Because we heard he's going to come back in three days. Because we don't want the disciples to come and steal his body. So he goes down and checks with the folk in hell. Is that right, Brother George? He goes and checks with the folks in hell. He goes down there to let them know. He didn't use the term euangelion to preach to them, to save them. He went down there and told I told y'all that I was the Savior. And then all of a sudden, early on a Sunday morning, he gets up. Come on. Yeah, yeah, he gets up early on a Sunday morning. Come on. Gets up early on a Sunday morning. Yeah, come on. Is there anybody in here today that you need to put the Lord on in baptism? Is there anybody here today that you need to rededicate your life back to the Christ? Is there anybody here today, as we say it, we will stand, Brother Darnell, stand up, raise your hand. Elder George, stand up. Myself, we will study with you 
right now today, if you want to learn more, right after this service today, or if you want to learn more about your soul salvation, we will study with you right now. We will stop this service to baptize you for remission of sin because when he saves you, Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But here's the problem. Some of you saved, but you ain't acting like it. Some of you, the Lord has died on the cross. He was born. We don't talk about that. But we still out here walking around like we ain't got nothing to shout about, like we ain't been saved from the mess we was in or even the mess we was in yesterday. Now, as I close, I take my seat. Will you come today? Will you come today? Will you come today? The gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. When heaven came to earth, he came down to this earth to save you from sin through the vehicle of forgiveness, through the church. And for that, we are in glory. If you're here today, you need prayer. We're going to take the prayer requests that are coming in. You want to learn more about the Lord, his church, his work. Will you stand? Will you stand as we as will you stand? Sing one verse, a couple verses of an invitation hymn. We're going to pray you up. We're going to study with you. We're going to pray that you have a stronger 2023. Sing a verse. Come to the Lord right now. Come to the Lord. If you want to be baptized for remission of sins, come to the Lord right now. You can come sit on this front row. We will take your confession right now today. We're gonna, as we sang a verse of this song, and as we be, continue, continue our worship service. You are my strength, strength like no other. Lord is my strength. Strength like no other. He's my strength. Reach to me. Time right now. Prayer time right now. You are, you are my strength. My strength. My strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach it. Reach last week, we know it's the holidays. We know people struggle. We know people struggle with depression, anxiety. I want you to know you can call us anytime. I want you to know before you leave here today, all you got to do is grab Elder George, grab Brother Darnell, Brother Cedric, raise your hand, Brother Crawford, Brother Mark, 
Brother Donnie. You can get uh, Henry in the back. Myself, we'll pray with you. Amen. You want more? To learn more about the Lord's church, to becoming a Christian, we will study with you today. We have numerous prayer requests that have come in. Andrea Smith says, please pray for Sylvia King. She's ill with the flu. Also pray that my daughter and granddaughter will be able to fly into KC after their flight has been canceled twice and rescheduled three times. Keep the Smith family in your prayers. We're grieving the loss of loved ones. Mercy, 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 mercy. Carolyn White, Sister Wondrous Burns, wants to thank everyone for their prayers. She is home and is doing fine. Thank you. As we said, Brother Oscar, Brother Oscar, can you come here for just one minute? Brother Oscar, right after church, if we can, Brother Oscar, myself, Brother George, what we want to do is call seniors. We want to call, just look around for some of the seniors that are not here. We want to call them as soon as church is over. We'll get three groups of people or you just get with somebody. It, we're going to call our seniors. Call some of our senior citizens just to say happy holidays. <coughs> Merry Christmas. We love you. We As soon as church is over, Brother Bill, Brother Bill Davis is in the back. We're going to make some calls, right? Cheryl Campbell says, please pray for my friend Carl Davis, who is fighting cancer. Also continue to pray for me and my struggles. I'm going to have Brother Mark to pray us up. Zandy Matlock, please keep the East Side congregation in your prayers and the Wilkins family. Sonia Tatum, if the church can keep me in your prayers, I've been going through for surgeries. I've been through these trials and many tribulations. Asking for prayers. Nancy George, please keep Dorothy Brown in the household in your prayers. The grandbaby and son are sick with COVID. Sonia Tatum, I truly am ready and needing to be baptized and ready to change. I was back. I was, I want to get back into being with the saints. All right, we'll be here. We'll be here. We got you, Sonia. We got you. You come on. We got you. Zandy Madlock, keep brother and sister Wells in your prayers. Just based on the number of people that are outpouring, we know that we need to be praying for people. Sonia Tatum, I think it's time for me to call on Jesus and to keep me in my prayers. April Hill, please keep my family and our health and traveling grace for my daughter, Christina, who will be traveling out of town. Early in Valentine, I want to pray, the church to pray for me because I've been sick. Um, we're going to be praying for people. Uh, if you need prayers where you are, raise your hand. Prayers where you are, raise your hand. Brother Mark will pray. I'll come back and recognize visitors, and then we'll end, we'll end from there. Brother Mark. Like the psalmist says, Lord, how excellent is your name, Lord. Lord God, <clears throat> God, we bless you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, thank you so much, Lord. Lord, we just, we want to bless you, Lord. We thank you for how good and great and how mighty you are, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, you, 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 you love righteousness, Lord. The Bible tells us that you hate wickedness, Lord, and evil, and those that, that, that scheme against you and your word, Lord. How long will it be till you answer our prayers, Heavenly Father? We know that you hear our prayers, though. Is he that, that made the ear not hear our prayers? Or he that made the eyes not see the things that we need? We know that you're, you're sitting on your throne, Lord. And you're looking down upon this earth, Heavenly Father. 
And you are holy and, my, and mighty, Lord. You are righteous, God. You ride on the cherubs, Lord. You ride on the on the wind on the winds of the wings, Lord. On the on the on the wings of the wind, Lord. That's what your word says. God, thank you for how good you are. Lord, thank you, Lord. Forgive us for our sins, Lord. Forgive us for our transgressions, Lord. Forgive us for our sins, Heavenly Father. We've all sinned and fallen short of your glory. But God, the only hope that we have, and this is the reason why we're, we're humble, but we can approach your throne with boldness because what Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, Lord. Thank you for shedding your blood for us, Jesus. Thank you for this birth that you had, this miraculous conception, Heavenly Father, that you took the womb without the seed of man and you overshadowed it with the Holy Ghost. And that holy thing, which is a sign that the prophet Isaiah said, would be from God. And you were born on this day. We respect the holy day more than the holiday. That's why we come to worship you in spirit and truth. Despite it being a holiday, Lord, we love you, Lord. We lift you up, Lord. It's for you and in spirit and truth, God. Lord, it's in the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. By his name. None other name in heaven which by we can be saved, Lord, that we plead over our situations. You saw the prayer requests that we have, God. We trust in you. We hope in you, God. Our enemies may encompass us, but God, you will protect us. You will guide us. You will not let them rip our souls apart, Lord, but you, we are in your hand. You are a strong and mighty tower. You have divine safety like the preacher talked about this morning, and we rest in you, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord God. Bless us. Heal us. Keep us. Thank you. Everything that we have, God, we are not ashamed. It is only because of you, God. You've given us life. You've given us our jobs. You've given us our brains. You've given us our bodies. You've given us our cars. You've given us everything that we have. And we thank you and give it back to you and bless your holy name, God. Please forgive those uh, that have, have done wrong by you. Please be with this world today. Be with those that are less fortunate. And we're so much better, oh, so much better from this worship service today, God. Thank you for this worship service. Thank you. We, we were so glad, and it's all because of you, God. There is so much more to be said, but at this time, God, we just want to stop. Look at all of us are here for you. We're not worried about the time right now. We know that it's because of you, God, that we have, we move, and we have our being, God. Thank you so much. Let us be better. We, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over each and every one of us. Watch over us as we depart for the rest of this week until we, we gather again in the body of Christ and worship you, God, in spirit and truth, God. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we submit this prayer and let the children of God say amen. Amen. Man, bless you. Bless you. A couple quick announcements. Number one, oh, thank you. We've got uh, some gifts for you outside. Uh, <laughs> there'll be some gifts, a little small something for you, just something small. Next, uh, this is going to be three or four groups calling people right after, calling our seniors just to reach out to them. Oscar Williams says, um, we would like to share that we're celebrating 46th anniversary today. Well, y'all come on out here. Come on out here. Y'all come, 46 years, y'all need, come on, y'all, yeah, come on, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. 46 years of ministry, 46 years of marriage, amen, 46 years of marriage, amen, bless you, bless you, bless you. Also, if you have an interest in joining the visual team, working with the PowerPoint, uh, uh, and the PowerPoint in the process doing worship, see Sister Patrice Hervey. Uh, there was something else I was supposed to tell you. Uh, Sister Roger, bless you, raise your hand, glad you back today. Sister Madeline, always good to see y'all in the house. And is that Nakia Snow? Is that, oh, you got to stand up, Nakia. Nakia been on with us. Bless you, bless you. Brother Fincher Snow's daughter. And just so bless you. So many others. I'm going to get that in trouble, but call the names. We're going to go ahead and, and dismiss Brother DeCorion. You can come and dismiss. I know I forgot something. Uh, see Brother Oscar. 
he's going to call. We're just going to say, hey, we're just calling you to say happy birth. I mean, I mean to say uh, 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 happy holidays. And also, some of you other folks, just, we're just going to be up here. We're just going to start calling the seniors. Grab two or three people around you. Hey, we just, this brother and sister, so and so on the phone, we're just calling to reach out to you on, um, through this holiday season. Brother Corian is going to give us our closing prayer. May the Lord bless and keep each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Let us go. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for all the new blessings you have gave to us. As we go into this new year, dear Lord, um, please just walk with us as we're going through it. Um, as we walk out of here, let us please go and enjoy time with our families as uh, Christmas comes one time a year, dear Lord. So let us enjoy it. And in the name we pray. Amen. Amen.